All right, there we go. You guys are excited about this verse. How many of you already knew that verse? Maybe you've heard it before. All right, Harvest Kids Camp, we're talking today in our teaching time all about Jesus. And maybe Jesus is a name that you've heard before. Maybe Jesus is a name that you've just started learning about this week in Harvest Kids Camp. And today, we are going to be talking about why Jesus is a big deal. And we're going to talk about what we learned yesterday and then continue the story and talk about this door to God's family and why Jesus is such a big deal for us getting to be a part of God's family. So what do we do before our teaching time every day? Let's pray. Let's pray and ask that God would teach us today why Jesus is such a big deal and why Jesus' life and death for us allows us to be a part of God's family. So why don't we pray that? Dear God, thank you for this time right now that we get to open up your Bible, your word to us, the master's book, the big God story. Thank you that you gave it to us, that we get to learn from it, that we get to know about you, this amazing God, that we get to learn about how this amazing God sent Jesus, fully God, fully human, and we want to know why he's so important. So God, would you teach us today? Teach us through our teaching. Help us in our small groups later to learn more and to ask great questions. And we pray all of this today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, so we're going to start our teaching time today with what we're calling our master's question, something we're going to talk about today. So we're going to put it on the screen, and I want us all to think about this question today. Here we go. Why is Jesus the only way? Say that with me. Why is Jesus the only way? That is what we're going to answer today. Now, how many of you remember yesterday when I showed you this? What is it? Good. You remember. It's a key. And we talked about how in our lives in this world, and even with God's people Israel, through all of those years of learning to trust God as the perfect heavenly father, think about those stories like Noah and Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Joseph. You heard some more stories today. You heard, what, about a man named David in the time of kings for God's people? You know, a lot of God's kings for his people Israel, they were struggling to trust God too, have faith in God. And then some time went by as well, and we heard about different prophets and judges and for God's people. But everyone was trying to figure out, what does it mean to trust God? And then one day, Jesus came along, and he was born as a baby. Remember, that was yesterday's story. He was born in a manger. We celebrate that at Christmas time because that's a big deal. God kept his promise. And Jesus grew up and became a man, and then he started to teach people, I am the key. I am the way to unlock a way for you to come back to God's family. Now, if you remember Harvest Kids Camp, there were some things that we talked about in our world that we sometimes think is the key, right? What's this key? Being good. Sometimes we think, if I'm just good enough for God, he will love me. And he will accept me back into his family. And so we think that the key of being good is what's going to unlock the door for us to be back into God's family. Sometimes we think that knowing answers is the way to get back to God's family. I just need to know enough. If I just know the stories of the Bible, if I can give all the answers, if I come to Harvest Kids Camp and know all five verses for memory, then that is what's going to allow God to welcome me back into his family. The Bible says that that's not true either. In fact, what was that one key? What was the key we said? Yes, I love that you remember. Jesus told people, you need to believe in me. And maybe yesterday in your small groups, you talked about what do we believe? What are we supposed to believe in Jesus? Well, we believe in his life for us, that he lived a perfect life, the life that we as God's people could never live. And we believe in Jesus' death for us. And that's where the story continues today. You know, as Jesus' life continued, he kept talking about how he was the key. He said, you need to have faith in me. You need to have faith that I am here for you on this earth right now. And I need you to believe that I am the way that's going to help you come back to God's family. Because all of us are filled with sin. And if you remember back to Monday in our story... Sin is what separated us from God. When Adam and Eve sinned, they were removed from God's family. You can't be in the garden anymore. Sin will separate you from God because God is not sinful. God is perfect and loving and holy. And God said, you can't be with me if that's the sinful people that you are. 
So for all of history, people have been trying to figure out how can we get back to God? And people would realize we can't do it on our own. We always fail. We make mistakes. Sometimes we think we have the key and then we, we try and please God and then we find out, oh, why is this not working? Well, when Jesus was on earth, today in our story, in John chapter 14, it's where our memory verse is from. What was the memory verse? 14 verse 6. In John chapter 14, Jesus' ministry on earth is coming along quite well. He's been healing people. He's been doing miracles. And Jesus, one day with his disciples, which was a close group of friends that he had with him that were following him, they saw all of these miracles. They watched him do incredible things. They heard all of Jesus' teaching. One day, some of them were with Jesus. And Jesus said, you know, I'm not going to be with you forever. Some of his disciples maybe heard Jesus say that and thought, what do you mean, Jesus? What do you mean you're not going to be with us forever? We're here. You're here. I mean, what's going to happen? And Jesus began to hint for them and and tell them that one day coming soon, I am going to die on a cross for your sins because all of you need a way to come back to God. And God has allowed me to be the way. I am God So I can do it. I am a big deal. And Jesus' disciples thought, well, what do you mean, Jesus? So you're going to die, and then then what's going to happen? And Jesus would tell them and say, well, I want you to remember that even though I'm going to die, three days later, I will come back to life again. Whoa, Jesus, what? How can that be possible? We've never seen that before. And Jesus wanted them to know that because he was God, he could do things that no one else could do. He had power over sin and death, and he was going to come back to life again. And then Jesus was telling his disciples, but also I want you to know that one day after I come back to life again, I'm going to go to heaven and prepare a place for all of God's family to one day spend forever with me. And this is where one of Jesus' disciples who was listening, his name was Thomas, he was listening to Jesus. Remember our song today? He's listening to Jesus in verse 5 of John chapter 14. He says, Jesus, Lord, we don't know where you're going. Where are you going? And Jesus responds to him and says, look, this is what you need to know. You need to know in verse 6, here's your memory verse. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. I am the way back to God's family. And so what Jesus was trying to help his disciples understand is, is I am the key. Now remember yesterday at the end of our teaching time, I said we're going to ask, what do, we, what do we do with this key? What are we supposed to do with faith in Jesus? Well, Jesus wanted his disciples to know. He would want us to know that Only by believing in Jesus can we be back in God's family. It's the only way. Not by believing in your camp leader. Not by believing in me through our teaching time. Although I want you to believe what we're teaching. Not by believing in yourself and thinking that you are good enough or you can do it. Jesus said, no, I want you to believe that I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life for you. And Jesus was telling them, you have faith in me? You go to Jesus and say, Jesus, I believe. I believe in your life for me. I believe in your death for me. I believe that you died in my place. That should have been me. I believe it's all true. Please forgive me, God. Forgive me for thinking that I could do it on my own. Jesus was telling his disciples, Simon and all the others, Thomas, that is when when you you have faith in Jesus, that door is unlocked. And you know what happens then? Jesus says, the door opens to God's family. Because Jesus made a way for you to go back to God's family. Believe in me and you can be welcomed. You can be adopted into God's family. There's that word we've been learning about all week. What is adoption? Question on day one. Adoption is getting to be part of God's family. You know what Jesus was trying to help people understand? If you believe in me, then you can be part of God's family. If you don't believe in me, 
You can't find any other way to go back to God's family. That's an incredible thing that we're learning today because Jesus wanted people to understand how big of a deal he was. I want to show us our memory verse on the screen. I want you to see a couple words in our verse today. John 14, verse 6. So Thomas asked him this question, which way? And then what does Jesus say? I am. I am. Jesus, I am the way. Now I know where to go. I am the truth. Jesus, everything you say is exactly what I need to hear. And I am the life. Do you know what that means? You know what Jesus was telling his disciples? I want you to know that there is life through that door. That believing in Jesus, you can have life. We don't have to be worried about being afraid of sin. We don't have to be worried about, remember all the effects of sin, pain and sickness and sadness and death and cancer and families that argue and fighting with our siblings. I know that's hard sometimes, but through that door is life. You can trust God and you can know that by believing in Jesus, he made a way for this door to be open. And the way back to God's family is, is being provided to us through Jesus. You know what? Some people heard Jesus say this. And they listened and they thought, I don't know, Jesus. If that's true, that makes you to be a pretty big deal. You're the only way. The way to God's family is the only way I can find life and I can be forgiven. And Jesus would say, yeah, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In some of our stories that we hear about how Jesus did incredible healings. Sometimes he, hear, he healed people. Sometimes he did incredible miracles to show that he was God displaying his power. And then after those healings, people would look to Jesus and say, wow, we have never seen anything like this before, Jesus. We believe you. You are the way. You know what? Even Jesus' disciples started to learn that eventually. They would recognize Jesus and say, well, Jesus, there is no other place I would rather go. I realize you are the key. Believing in you is the way that we can go back to God's family. Yes, I want that, Jesus. You know, the same thing is true for us in our story today. You know, John chapter 14 teaches us that Jesus is a big deal. Jesus is the only way. Now, at the beginning of our teaching, maybe you remember how I asked us a question. Why is Jesus the only way? You know what the answer is? It's your memory verse. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That's the master's question answered today. Why is Jesus the only way? Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That's what the Bible tells us. No other way but through me. Remember the song? There's no other way but through Jesus. That makes Jesus a big deal. You know the incredible thing that Jesus says? He says, there's the way, it's me. Believe in me, that's how you get back to God's family. He doesn't say, I want you to try and be the best you can be. I don't want you to try and do things to please God. I just want you to trust, have faith and believe and then you have the key in everything that you need. You have faith that unlocks the way back to God's family. So maybe some of you today have been learning about Jesus this week. Maybe Jesus to you is someone that you've heard in stories before and you thought, yeah, I don't, I don't really know what I think about Jesus. I've heard about him before, maybe at church. Maybe you heard about Jesus on your school playground before. Maybe you heard the name of Jesus come out of someone's mouth before and you thought, wow, I don't really know what I think about Jesus. He doesn't seem that important. People don't really talk very nice about Jesus. You know what we're gonna learn today in our small group time and hopefully what you're hearing in our memory verse and story today? Jesus is a really big deal. Jesus is the one that all of creation was waiting for. God's people, Israel, for years and years said, God, when are you going to send the one? When are you going to send the one that's going to save us? When are you going to send the one that will rescue us and let us come back to your family? 
And then Jesus was born one day, and we learn through Jesus' life where Jesus says, I am the only way. If you want to come and be part of God's family, believe that I am the only way. Believe that I died for you. Believe that there's nothing else in this world that will save you. And then you can have life. Then you are a part of God's family. In the next two days of camp, we're going to talk about what changes in our life. We're going to talk about if we want to be part of God's family, what do we need to do? And then all of a sudden, what happens when we're part of God's family? How amazing is it to be a part of God's family? Because as we're going to learn, it doesn't mean that we leave our families now and go somewhere to be with God's family, but it does change how we live our lives. Because Jesus has made an incredible way for us to come back to God's family. You know what Jesus said? He actually said, I am the door. Believe in me because I am the doorway for you to come back to God's family. So let's pray. Let's pray and thank God that he sent Jesus, that Jesus is a big deal. Maybe some of you this week are thinking, you know what, God, I just, I I want you to help me believe that Jesus is a big deal. I want you to give me faith, that key to unlock the way to come back to God's family. Help me believe, God. Maybe there's some things that you're struggling with, you've heard before, or maybe things you've never heard before, and you're thinking, I, I think it's true, I, I'm not sure. I want you to ask your leaders today, but right now, I want you to pray with me, and maybe quietly just ask God and say, God, would you give me faith to believe this? Help me believe that you are a big deal, so let's pray. God, thank you for our story today. In John chapter 14, God, when you helped tell us and direct us and guide us in our lives, and you did that by saying, well, I'll I'll show you the way back to me. It's through Jesus. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. Thank you that you sent Jesus to our world to be an example for us, but also to do something that we could never do. Thank you that Jesus died on a cross for us. Thank you that three days later, Jesus came back to life again for us, fully paying for all of our sin. God, as we're thinking about the life of Jesus, help us have faith today to believe that he is the only way. Help us to think, wow, Jesus is a big deal. If he's the only way back to God, I want to know more about this Jesus. But thank you that you send Jesus. And God, we pray that you bless us now as we go to our lunchtime, as we go to our small groups. Ask us, help us to ask great questions to our leaders. Give our leaders wisdom to answer them. Help us to listen to them as they lead and care for us. And we thank you for this morning and pray for this afternoon. And pray this all in the name of the Jesus who is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen.